it everyone Michelle here from the Creative Cove thanks for joining me today uh, today's video is just a fun quick little video on well, I don't know if it's quick but a video on carving these little um, stamps uh, so I love making my own stamps uh, for several reasons one because no one else will have the stamp that you have um, so I have carved a few in my uh, uh, a couple of maybe a year or so that maybe two years that I've been playing with uh, carvings I don't do it too often but I do love the look of using your very own stamps uh, they could be something very rustic or something very detailed and uh, nobody will have what you have because you've hand carved it and it's it might sound a little intimidating but it's really not if you have the right tools. So tool wise, I went on Amazon and bought a little carving kit. I think it was like 30 bucks Canadian. Um, it came with this, yeah, speedball. Um, no, it wasn't speedball, it was this guy. So it came with this and then all these other little, let me just grab them here, all the, um, different blades and it also came with the 10 sheets of the rubber linoleum type carving stuff <laughs> so you got all that and I, I got a lot these are still the original 10 packs and I have one and a half of these left so I use them quite sparingly and then I went on again because I wanted a super uh, small blade and I bought this speedball um, I think it also came with a few bits that went in the back and I just threw them in there. So this one has an extra small fine V, which I like to get into smaller details. Uh, so these little guys I created because I was making, I found these tabs, tags, yeah, like a price tag. And I didn't have a stamp small enough, uh, so I wanted to be able to embellish them with a cute little stamp. Uh, so I decided to carve one and then I carved two. So today we will carve a few more and what I love to do is create a collection of ready to use glue down bits and pieces of these stamps. So I've stamped different kinds of paper in different colors. So this is tissue paper or tra I believe actually this is tracing paper, some watercolor paper and I just use up some scraps and create these little mini ready to glue down bits so then I can make these little clusters and I have something ready to make a focal point. And what's cool again is it's very unique. Nobody's gonna have this specific uh, look because you have, again have hand carved it. So let's do a little one. Uh, I just take a sheet and I do a little sketch. So I'll go on the rough edge here. Uh, what should we sketch? <laughs> I didn't even think of that part. Um, let's just do something kind of simplistic. So I'm just going to carve out these little round shapes. Um, so when I go to carve this line, I want to carve the, on the outside of this line. So what you carve away does not print, if that makes sense. So it's kind of working in the in the negative, I guess. So something like that. Let's try that one. So I take my blade and I push with even pressure and I just scoot around it. You never want to put your hands or fingers in front of the blade. Trust me, it is not fun. And I just slowly work my way around that sketch. And it takes just a, 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 like a sliver off, which is why I like this one to work on very small pieces. Now you can go on YouTube and find some really fabulous carvers. I'm just doing it as a hobby. I, I just like to, like I said, carve my own little stamps when the mood hits. I don't do tons of detail. My carvings are much more simplistic because I am not a professional carver. I'm actually very much the opposite. I don't have a lot of patience, so I tend to over carve. 
or I get uh, I speed up and then I screw up because once it's carved, it's carved. You can't put it back. And I just work my way around my sketch, taking out all the stuff I don't want printed. And again, I like the rustic look. So if there, if it's uneven or there's something that's printing that adds a bit of an old look to it, I leave it in because I kind of like that. So I wouldn't start, if you're going to start um, carving, I wouldn't start with something this small. I'd do something a little bit bigger scale so it's a little bit easier to have some control, kind of see what you're doing see how the tools work, how they feel. Because it does get a little um, dicey in these tiny little spots here. And you want to be able to control the tool. And it slips. This tool is slippery in here. It's razor sharp. So it's going to slip quite easily through this. And it's easy to slip and ruin your design. Uh oh, I thought she was sleeping. <laughs> She's awake, my Mildred. Let's see if she behaves herself. She likes. To, she's going through this serious barking phase right now. She's like, uh, "This is my house. I'm going to guard it." I mean, not that she's a guard dog by any means. She's like the friendliest, most social butterfly of a dog I've ever met. She wants to be everybody's bestie. <laughs> I'm just going to grab the next size up. This guy here. These are a couple of ones that a friend gave me that she doesn't use anymore. And I like the way they feel in my hand with this flat edge. They're kind of an antique. I'm just going to carve away some chunkier bits so we're not here all day and just see maybe give it a quick stamp and see where we can tidy it up so once you've kind of cut away a lot of the rubber it gets trickier to actually carve because there's no resistance so you want to bear that in mind too. You don't want to cut yourself a little piece of this stuff and then try and carve it. You want to, the bigger the, the piece that's attached to, the more resistance you have and it's a little bit easier to control. So I don't want to cut it away just yet. So what I like to do is I take an old ink pad or a light ink pad and I'll just rub a little bit of ink on there and see what, what ink is grabbing. I might have to go a little darker than that. This is the one I was looking for. So I can see where the ink is grabbing on the stamp itself. So there's a little bit in here that's still grabbing. So I'll eliminate that. Clean up around here maybe. And right in here, still grabbing. When I say grabbing, it's it's picking up little ink remnants. So the cleaner you make that, the cleaner the stamp. Okay, let's just give this a quick stamp. What ink I have on there. So I can see the outer edges. I maybe want to put a little bit of lines through these. Let me just tidy up. Right here. Change the shape of that leaf. Change the shape of this leaf. And then I'm going to put these really fine thin lines in here, like veins. Just super thin. They're almost impossible to see. But I can feel them when I'm pushing. This side. OK, 
Okay, and then we're gonna cut it because I, I just wanna get rid of all this space around. There's a cutting tool that comes with it, but I've got my scissors handy here. This stuff's nice and thick, but it's still easy to cut. Do this. Again, I'm not a professional, so you, there might be some people out there who do do this regularly and might be cringing right now at what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to grab scrap. Make sure all your debris is gone. And we'll give it a try. See what we think. Okay, so this one's kind of weird. This one right here. So let's see if we could change that a little bit. Actually, I kind of like the unevenness of it. I think it's this one that's bothering me. Let me make this one a little different. Maybe a little bolder line through it. Let's see. So just a just a tiny little difference. I like that. It's cute. So you see how very rustic it looks. You know, it's just something that nobody else will have because you've hand carved it and it's got this really rustic kind of hand vibed antique -y look. Now the antiqueness might be the ink and the paper that I'm using, but I feel like it's just got this really pretty look to it that could be very versatile in the types of journals I like to make. So there you go. So what I like to do is I take papers like this and then I'll just, um, I'll cut, I'll stamp them like this and then I will use another stamp. So if you know my videos, you know that I love this uh, illegible type handwriting just for some more texture. And then I'll cut some of these up. Or rip them, whatever, whatever works for the look you're after. And throw them in my box ready to use. So you can also do something like this where you create your own decorative papers for backgrounds. So I use a stamp on, um, I'll just grab another scrap. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you want to see how I do it. I just choose the stamp, so let's use the new one I made. Oop. I just load her up and I stamp it in a style that I think I'm going to use. So in this case, maybe you do just a band, something like that, or I'll do it where I'm just using it like decorative paper. I'm in frame here and I just reuse my stamp over and over again I get so much out, use out of this stamp I've designed and these little ones are nice too if you do an exchange with someone these are nice and small so you can send them on their way so there's a, a nice little piece of paper you can use I'm going to finish it off with some writing. In this case, I'm going to run the writing up and down. I have a lot of stuff on my desk here. Okay, and there I've created my own little paper. Maybe cut this straight. Of course, you can do this with full sheets of paper, but in my life, I'm looking for ways to use up these constant scraps that I have. Put these away before I cut myself. So something like that. And then you can build a cluster on it. You've got your own background paper that you've created. I think I want some more writing down here. Just to show on the edge. I mean, that's really pretty just in a journal all on its own. You know, just stick.
sticking that right in there. Like that, maybe. Creating a little fold. Let's do that. I like the look of that. So we'll do that, and then let's just embellish this edge here. Straighten it up a bit. Okay, I'm gonna maybe put a focal point on this front piece. Go back to this. stick. So I don't even care if paper's upside down. None of that stuff bothers me. I'm not reading it anyways. I'm just um, gluing it down for texture. Like this. Let's see if we can make this work. do it and then let's grab one of our pre-done guys so like I said that's a finished one we'll move that out kind of like the look of the it's a bit too big eh? something like that it's pretty and then I feel like it needs a number I'm obsessed with numbers these days so I have these really cute little ones that have already been cut out. I believe they're the Tracy Fox, one of her collection from Etsy. And um, I just had a fussy cut day. I glued them to more paper just because my printing paper was no good. So I wanted something a little bit stronger. So I glued the page down and then I cut them out. Uh, I think I'm going to go, this glue should be strong enough. I put enough on that, and then this. And even though they're different carvings, they're still cohesive with the, with the style of the carving, as well as the color that I've used. That's cute. Something different. Put a little thing in here for writing maybe. What have I got? Nice clean paper, clean scrap. Um, where's my ruler? Oh, where, oh, where did my ruler go now? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so this could be a cute little spot to write in. And if you have uh, one of those stamps that has lines on it for writing, you can put that in. And then just to tie it all together, I'll put this guy right here and a little bit of writing. There we go. Cute. Okay, let's glue that in. Uh, which book did I put it in this one? So you got a little embellished. There's another stamp of uh, another carving that I did. So you can see how much fun they are, and like how much you can get out of those tiny little things. And I just love the, the rustic nature of these carvings. It just make me really happy. Sorry, I'm just getting my heavy duty glue here. To come down. It's almost empty. And this is a thick piece of cards. Well, it's not really cardstock, but it's heavy paper. So I want to make sure it's adhered quite well. All right, come on. I'll be 
stingy. There we go. I'll put it, well, that would have made a, a really cute pocket, actually. I should have done that. It will. There we go. All out of your own carving. How much fun is that? And again, just storing a little collection of ready-to-use bits and bobs. So you can just stick them or staple them right into your journal. That's cute right there. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Hopefully that's in camera view. So I hope that uh, gave you some inspiration. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think. Are you going to give little carvings a try? Little mini carvings? You know what you could use, um, and I've done a video on that too, is the erasers. Do I have one of those handy before I let you go? Did I keep any of those? I usually put them away and give them away in my surprise box. So no, I did not keep any, but I use those little cheapy dollar store erasers, white ones, and I carved into them and I'll try and remember to link that uh, video below and I did little botanical ones there too. So uh, there you go. I hope that gives you some ideas. Uh, have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.